All right, today we're talking about Lutz, Florida. Lutz is just north of Tampa, really popular area nowadays. Let's get into it. Woo! I'm Sam and welcome to the Living in Tampa, Florida channel. Right here, every single week, we release videos about what it's like to live, work, play, and move to the Tampa, Florida area. If that's something you wanna follow along with, make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell, so you don't miss any of our videos in the future. I'm also a licensed realtor in the state of Florida, so if you have any real estate specific questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. My phone number and email are right there on the screen. All right, today we're talking about Lutz. Lutz, Maybe you've heard it pronounced Lutz. Uh, some people often call me and pronounce it Lutz. So I know it. it's one of those that's kind of confusing. How do you say that? And then also it's kind of confusing demographically, geographically. It's what I would consider the area to be rural suburban. And maybe that's kind of confusing, but we will get into what I mean by that here in a little bit. Okay, first let's go to the map. You can see Lutz is just north of Tampa to the west of Lutz, you really get into like the Keystone, Odessa area. To the north, you really hit Lando Lakes. And a little bit to the west, you hit Lando Lakes too. To the east, northeast, you hit Wesley Chapel. And then to the east, southeast, and directly south, you are into Tampa. Lutz is actually only about 15 miles from downtown and pretty similar distance to the airport as well. When it comes to getting to the beaches, Lutz is a little bit further. So that might be the biggest disadvantage of the area is if you have a boat and you don't wanna just go on the lakes and you wanna go out on the Gulf, you wanna go fishing or you wanna go out on the Gulf because it's different and, and it's fun or you wanna to go to the beaches. Those things are a little further away. Lutz has about 20,000 people right now and it's actually growing really, really fast. There is still new construction going on in the area and they're building all kinds of properties. Not just single family homes, but they're also building apartments and townhouses and villas and everything in between. I, I guess that kind of is everything in between. I'm really just trying to say that they're building all kinds of housing, both to rent and to buy. The main reason people reach out to me about loot is because of the schools. A lot of people really like great schools and their ratings that they use. And Steinbrenner High School is like a 10 out of 10 on greatschools.com. And maybe nine out of 10, I don't know. 10 out of 10 seems impossible. No school should be 10 out of 10, but Steinbrenner is really high and people really like it. But not just for the academics, well, not just for the, the typical academics, like the STEM kind of classes, but also for like the liberal arts and theater and things like that. Steinbrenner has a lot of those things going for it. Also a really well-known school in the area is Lutz Preparatory School, which is more of a primary school and not, you know, not a high school. And it is a charter school. So it's a lottery system or a, a like a waiting list system to get into it, but it is free and you know covered by your taxes. And that Lutz Prep School has a beautiful campus. I mean, it's kind of unfortunate that they're, they're right there on the highway, but this the way they back up to the lake and the whole area is really, really beautiful right around there. Okay, going back to the map, Lutz is actually mostly in Hillsborough County and then a little bit in Pasco County. And this whole area is technically unincorporated and so therefore Lutz can easily flow over into the unincorporated area of Pasco County as well. And Lutz really kind of started right on this county line as with the original train station for the area. And in the beginning, it really was just a little town to support this little train station and it has grown into something quite different now. There are still train tracks that go right here through town. You can see them right alongside this highway and they still go past that original train station. Half of the homes were built pre-1980 with a lot of housing booms happening after that. In the mid 80s and 90s and then into the early 2000s when some of the big neighborhoods started to be developed, neighborhoods like Cheval. And Cheval is actually the neighborhood that most people ask about whenever they consider moving to the area. Cheval is kind of a picturesque neighborhood based around this golf course and has all kinds of price ranges. I mean, they don't start too low, starting at about 500,000 going up into the millions. 
and it's a really really interesting community built around this golf course with actually a toll road going through the middle of it kind of dividing it in half into these two little parts and in the neighborhood you, you pass under that toll road that also kind of tells you how you could commute to downtown either from that toll road on D dale mabry even further west over on gun highway or if you happen to be all the way on the east side of town you can always go down i-275 and it's that, actually that I-275 that divides Lutz and Wesley Chap. So Cheval isn't the only neighborhood that is nice and new. There are a lot of these that were developed around the same time in the like early 2000s and some that are still being built. And there are even some that were started, you know, 10 years ago or so and they're still building in them as they sell the home. But most of those where they're still selling homes to build are really in the high price range. So although Lutz is a little rural in some areas where it does feel a little more suburban is in the areas where it borders with other towns. So in the south to Tampa, on the east side with Wesley Chapel, on the north to Land Lakes, and over on the west side next to Odessa. All these areas are a little more developed. That's where you have a lot more of the shopping and a lot more of just all kinds of little strips where there's, there's shops and salons and all kinds of things like that. Also kind of toward the top of the city, Highway 54 kind of cuts across east and west, and there is all kinds of development happening along that highway. Even more as you go west into Odessa, a lot of new development and a lot of new construction is happening over there. But not just homes, also like call centers and restaurants and things like that. So in one of these neighborhoods that is pretty similar to Cheval, it's actually like just across the street from Cheval. I was went to an open house for a client the other day and did a little video walkthrough and maybe they're watching this video. Uh, but we decided to make an offer on this house for them and we offered twenty thousand over asking price. And the house was listed at four seventy five, nice uh, twenty seven hundred square foot house with a pool. And we offered four ninety five and we agreed to cover forty thousand of an appraisal gap. So. Pretty much that just guarantees that even if it appraises under the original asking price, we will come up with more cash to cover that difference. So this was a very good, strong offer. And then we heard back yesterday that there were 33 offers and ours was not the best one. So, you know, that, that was us coming in right around 5% over asking price and making the terms really good and favorable for the seller. But most of these homes are selling for about 10% over the asking price right now. And what that typically means is that you just have to have more cash to be able to cover a low appraisal. That is the biggest implication when offering over asking price. You know, not just your you know being approved to that number, but if it does appraise low, to keep the deal under contract, to keep the house that you want, you will have to come up with that extra cash to make the deal work. In some instances, your lender might be willing to let you divert your down payment. So say you were doing a 20% down payment and you could divert some of those funds to covering a low appraisal. That is also an option, but you would wanna to talk to your lender about that, that potential before you made those kind of offers. So one of my favorite things about the Lutz area is actually the lakes. And there are a lot of these older communities and some you know giant houses on these lakes but it is really a different feel for Florida. It's not the beach or metro feel. It is a foresty lake kind of area in some of these Lutz areas. And these just pretty lakes with giant pine trees and giant cypress trees and a lot of houses built all around these lakes so you can do all kinds of water sports and water activities on these lakes. And a lot of them are big enough to water ski on, which is really interesting for the area. Of course, people are cautious of alligators and you would be in these as well, but alligators are not typically going to swim out into the middle of the lake to attack you. And they're typically not attacking unless they are threatened in some way. I hope you found this information useful today. I'm gonna to be coming out with some more loot videos in the coming weeks because it is an area that I get asked a lot about. And I feel like there's not quite enough information out there to help you make an informed decision about the area. So more to come for loot, but for now, thanks for coming by. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to call or text, email if you have any real estate specific questions. I'll see you soon.